Recently, I made a video over the Fallout Amazon show where I gave my general opinion about what I liked and what I didn't. In short, I like the series more than not, but there's some things I take issue with, such as lore choices. I'm hardly alone in this position and decided to make a video discussing these said lore choices. Obviously, a big spoiler warning before I go on. So, my original intention was to gather a list of problems people have pointed out and discuss them as topics of inconsistency or undesirability. But there's really only two things that seem to get brought up with any significant amount of frequency. That being the Shady Sand fiasco, including the date and location, and vault being nearly 100% confirmed to be the ones to drop the bomb. The first one being more about lore accuracy, while the second one is more of a dislike of a lore choice. There's a few smaller things that I saw here and there, but most were so mild or lacking in detail it's not worth going over. So we'll focus on the two bigger things, why people take issue with them, how to possibly work around them, and what the ramifications may be, narratively speaking. Since there's a lot less wiggle room compared to the other problem, let's start with the Shady Shands issues. Specifically, we'll begin with the talk to death one. The timeline is questionable. It's well known now that the show did an absolutely awful job at presenting information when needed. It seems to heavily imply that Shady Sands was destroyed in 2277, which would mess with the canon of New Vegas quite a lot, which took place in 2281. This had to, of course, be clarified by Todd Howard that no, this happened after New Vegas. And the date listed is when things started going bad. Although people usually say the beginning of the fall when meaning such. There's two stronger other pieces of evidence to suggest that the original intention of the show was to actually have the great nuking happen in 2277, with a shot specifically chosen to feature a book's last due date in late 2276, with admittedly extremely irregular returns on the second half of the stampings, and Lucy believing her mother died in the famine of 2277, meaning Hank told her that. This lines the dates up pretty well with the easily misread board. And while I will say it's likely an oversight, None of this really matters anymore in the context of lore discussion. Because if there's one thing Taltan knows how to do, it's run a bandage job. It's now canon by word of God that this happened after New Vegas. So we can move on into something a bit harder to bandage, though not impossible. Shady Sands doesn't appear to be where it's supposed to be. It seems more like it's in the LA Boneyard. The high rise buildings in the background certainly makes it look like it. Before, Shady Sands has often been depicted out in the middle of the desert. Some don't view this as a lore problem, but I disagree. Let me clarify. It's true that Shady Sands has shifted location between one and two. You can see this pretty easily when looking at posts where people have overlaid the first two world maps on top of the US map and tried to line them up. But to put Shady Sands in LA, this is a breaking canon. Specifically, it breaks the Vault Dweller's memoirs found in the Fallout 2 manual, which reinforces what we see in the first game, where he travels several days through the desert, reaching Shady Sands, recruited Ian, before continuing his journey to Vault 15, and only much later went to the LA Boneyard. And while it's significantly lower on the canon totem pole, though some things from it did become canon, it also breaks the Fallout Bible, where the 6th edition gives some geography of Shady Sands, pushing it more towards the Fallout 2 location. The consistency doesn't need to be perfect. It just needs to be far north of LA and far east of San Francisco. It's a fictional town. It can move a bit for the sake of convenience, but it would benefit from being somewhere in this general vague area to make narrative sense. But that also depends on if they destroyed Shady Sands. I mean THE Shady Sands from the first Fallout. Obviously that was the intent. They only said the name over and over. They showed a billboard with a high population count claiming the first capital of the NCR. But since the location of Shady Sands feels very, very questionable, we do actually have a band-aid option. That's said the option is very, very convoluted. It requires us looking around several sources, even the ones where the canon status is extremely iffy, such as the Wasteland Warfare Games RPG expansion book, where Shady Sands was mentioned to turn into Sandy Shores for reasons. But this gives us a potential threat to follow. If we were to accept this as canon, which is not, it's not reflected anywhere else, but if we did, then if Shady Sands from Fallout 1 was actually renamed Sandy Shores, what Shady Sands was destroyed? That's where we look at New Vegas, specifically the NCR dollar. We see that the dollar is under the Republic Reserve, which is located in Los Angeles. We can see Angel's Boneyard written where it says Washington DC for US dollars. This suggests that the Boneyard has some level of central government involvement. If we continue the US to NCR parallels, it only makes sense for the central government to be seated in the Angel's Boneyard. 
This is where the convolutedness really takes off, let me tell you. Essentially, the idea is that the NCR wanted to move its capital city to the LA Boneyard. Reasons? Maybe symbolism? Pacifying the harsh ruins of Los Angeles, showing the strength of the NCR. It doesn't fully matter for the purposes of this video. Regardless, they wanted to move the capital city, but it wasn't popular to make a new city the capital. Diehards wanted to keep Shady Sands as the capital. A compromise was made where a new settlement was founded, but named Shady Sands, while also claiming the legacy of the older town. So it could still be the first capital, even in a totally new location hundreds of miles away. People may or may not have went with it. Certainly, governing officials did. Plenty of proud Shady Sandians who didn't want to live in Sandy Shores also likely did. But locals of the area would be the ones to flock to it, rapidly increasing the size of the new, but also old by claiming the legacy, settlement. In real life, there have been cases where towns have moved, usually for tangible reasons. Disasters, for instance. And towns get renamed fairly often. I haven't found a case specifically where a town is founded but claims a legacy of an existing, still functioning town, especially keeping the name, but I'm trying, guys. So this hypothetical event would have to take place after Fallout 2, or maybe that time period is a transitional state. You could play with the line, was Shady Sands, even though Tandy clarifies most people call the city the NCR now. What it does is allow the original town's location to remain unharmed while still having the capital city of Shady Sands do its best speech check master impression and thus dealing a serious blow to the NCR by basically removing their influence from the state of Los Angeles. Though they continue to exist in other states like the state of Shady or the state of Dayglow, they have lost significant power overall. That said, like I have stated before, it's really convoluted and definitely not the intention, but it allows everything the show said to be true while being mostly harmless to the established lore. Note that I said mostly because the intentions of New Vegas dialogue mentioning Shady Sands is 100% supposed to be the general location presented in Fallout 1 and Fallout 2. Regardless, all that being said, what will the future hold for the NCR and the West Coast development? I personally suspect this is acting like a great reset for the West Coast development. To return it to something akin to Fallout 1, where they're somewhat like sovereign city-states with weak security and simple governments where there's not much in the way of law and order. Often, the biggest separation from the West and East Coast titles was the progress that was taking place, where it made the East Coast feel comparatively incompetent. And given that these are the worlds that Bethesda wanted to make, this feels like it's the decided method to balance the two coasts. Although the extent of damage done to the NCR has not been tracked, Todd's clarification doesn't clarify much beyond them existing in some capacity. All right, moving on to the vault tech thing. People take issue with this idea for a few reasons and it's generally all opinion based, namely because people feel it's a lot more official power than they really should have. There's absolutely no doubt that vault tech was an incredibly powerful entity. They had plenty of money to push around and get political favor and the government contracted plenty of businesses such as vault tech to develop dangerous weapons or experiments. But getting their hands on a nuclear bomb feels a bit out of reach. At the very least, it should be one of those things that the government would want to reserve for themselves to keep their fingers on the MAD button. Then again, Robco did build a nuke throwing robot, so maybe it's not as crazy as it might sound. They do have a lot of resources and scientists. Give them enough time, they could probably build nukes in secret. But maybe that's also a problem. Mm. Perhaps the whole feasibility topic as well as narrative consequence might be worth a video on its own. Moving on, it just doesn't make a ton of sense for companies that are typically driven by fat stacks of cash to want to blow up the whole world. I was personally in favor of the idea of vault wanting to prolong the war to benefit from government contracts and mass hysteria, but ending it with nukes? No. While there's a case to be made that a few high-ranked officials at the top of the ladder would be crazy enough to desire it, the idea that every representative in this board meeting started getting in on the idea that making nuclear fried humankind is totally cool actually, it starts feeling kind of ridiculous. At least have a few of them get up and storm out. I mean, at least House seemed to be the most reluctant to it, but even then it felt like, eh, maybe not, rather than a hard no. Finally, a lot of people liked the mystery. Was it America? Was it China? Was it a third country? Did some intern spill coffee on the wrong computer system? Was it, was it aliens? Man, that would have been the one worse idea than vault -Tec. With these three, a lot of people just feel it's kind of dumb, myself included. 
There's two ways to work around this, I feel. Easiest is following Tim Kaine's prediction, that it's just shooting around an idea that wouldn't really go anywhere. Basically, locker room Armageddon. A future episode could say nothing came of it, choosing to fall back on the mystery. I mentioned that was almost 100% confirmed who did this. But that little bit left over from almost could be the actuality. But let's say they wanted this big reveal to be more definite, which sounds like the more likely scenario. Instead, they could turn this around into a foundation of the Enclave, whether that's the literal foundation or simply another layer of it. After all, the Enclave was a conglomeration of a number of elites, ranging from political and military to commercial and industrial. This would easily fit the idea set by Fall 2, although I personally find it better to keep the mystery. Still, ourselves, and by dropping the bombs, ourselves, could mean the Enclave, a proposition pushed by the industrial arm of the Enclave. It works because the nature of the Enclave is filled with self-importance. It's composed of members who think they're better than the rest. Zealous fanaticism. The Enclave did it is a lot more acceptable than vault did it anyway. After all, since their game introduction, they've been pretty well versed in the fine arts of attempting global extinction. Having vault do it, I suppose, doesn't really change a ton about the games. It just feels completely senseless and it destroys the fun mystery and speculation. Undoubtedly, these two show produced elements have caused a fair amount of shakeup for a number of Fallout fans, myself included. I feel these were pretty bad creative decisions. One likely packaged in a misunderstanding, and one I feel like the reveal was meant to be more shocking when it was actually eye-rolling. My proposals are very shoddy, but are, I feel, methods of making these ideas live alongside with what was presented and become more acceptable, if still far from ideal. However, I do recognize that the road requires a lot of twists and turns to get to an end goal. Sadly, there are a lot of large hills and rivers that could not be easily paved over. There are perhaps better ways to make these coexist. And I know there are people who would much rather just cut Amazon's production from canon entirely. I just don't expect that to happen. To be fair, I don't expect these ideas I presented to materialize either. But hey, I feel what I set out could theoretically work, even if it requires an awful lot of conveniences and suspension of disbelief. Still, these were my ideas to make it work. Have your own that might be a lot less bloated? Rather just ax the baggage off altogether? Feel free to share your thoughts below. And a special thanks to my channel members, especially my members, Thrice Over members, like that crazy game developer and Danny McVee. If you'd like to support me and join as well, I'd be more than happy. Otherwise, like, share, subscribe, all that typical YouTube stuff. Thank you. Have a good one.